We will now look at skeletal muscle metabolism. The energy necessary for muscle contraction is provided by ATP. Because the muscle stores a limited amount of ATP, mechanisms must be in place to synthesize new ATP quickly to enable continued muscle activity. Your goals for learning are to understand the cellular processes for synthesis of ATP, to compare and contrast aerobic and anaerobic processes in the muscle cell, to examine the differences in ATP synthesis among different types of muscle cells. Here's what you need to know. The events of a single cross-bridge cycle, definitions of hydrolysis and dehydration synthesis, the role of enzymes in cellular processes. To review the events of a single cross-bridge cycle, click the link button. If you use a link button, you can return to the page you started from by clicking the return button. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. In muscle cells, the energy molecule, adenosine triphosphate, ATP, plays an important role in 1. Energizing the power stroke of the myosin crossbridge. 2. Disconnecting the myosin crossbridge from the binding site on actin at the conclusion of a power stroke. And 3. Energizing the calcium ion pump, which actively transports calcium ions back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. ATP is composed of the adenine nucleotide with two additional phosphate groups attached by high-energy phosphate bonds. The potential or stored energy in ATP is released when the terminal high-energy bond is broken by a hydrolytic enzyme. The end products of the hydrolysis of ATP are ADP, adenosine diphosphate, inorganic phosphate, and energy. Click the button to see hydrolysis. The end products of ATP hydrolysis are not discarded as waste, but can be recombined to form a new ATP molecule. Rebuilding ADP into ATP requires a synthetic enzyme to carry out dehydration synthesis and a new source of energy to rebuild the high-energy bond. Click the button to see dehydration synthesis. When ATP is formed by dehydration synthesis, it's like money in the bank. In fact, ATP is often called energy currency. When muscle cells hydrolyze ATP, energy is released and, like currency, can be spent for moving myofilaments and transporting ions. <coughs> Just like our piggy banks, ATP currency is limited. Muscle cells have only enough ATP to last for a few seconds during an active contraction period. Click the muscle cell to begin contraction and spend the ATP energy currency. Now that the ATP supply has diminished, let's look at how ATP is regenerated. When ATP supplies are low, muscle cells use three processes to synthesize additional ATP. 1. Hydrolysis of creatine phosphate. 2. Glycolysis. 
and three, the Krebs cycle, also called the citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. Click the creatine phosphate box to see its role in ATP synthesis. Creatine phosphate, an energy storage molecule, is the immediate source of energy for rebuilding ATP. Substrate phosphorylation is a hydrolytic process that transfers energy and a phosphate group from creatine phosphate to ADP, forming ATP. The amount of creatine phosphate is limited and is rapidly depleted in active muscle cells. While the muscle cells are using up creatine phosphate, they must turn to another source of energy, glucose. Click the blood vessel to learn more about glucose. Glucose is a major source of energy for synthesizing ATP. Glucose is available to muscles from two different sources. One, glucose enters the muscle cell directly from the blood. Two, glucose is produced by hydrolysis of glycogen stored in the muscle cell. Glucose is broken down in a process called glycolysis. The end products of glycolysis include two ATP molecules and pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid can follow one of two metabolic pathways. Click the pyruvic acid triangle to see the first pathway. In the absence of oxygen, pyruvic acid is converted into lactic acid. Lactic acid is the end product of the anaerobic pathway. During continued anaerobic conditions, excess lactic acid builds up rapidly, bringing about muscle fatigue. To avoid muscle fatigue, oxygen is needed. Oxygen is available to muscle cells from two different sources. One, oxygen enters the muscle cell directly from the blood. Two, oxygen is stored in myoglobin, an oxygen-binding protein that is abundant in certain types of muscle cells. To see the aerobic pathway that takes place when oxygen is present, click the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation box. When oxygen is present, the aerobic pathway will proceed, that is, the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. Pyruvic acid is converted into acetyl-CoA, which enters the Krebs cycle in a mitochondrion. Energy is transferred to ATP in the process of oxidative phosphorylation. The end products of the aerobic pathway are carbon dioxide, water, and 36 molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose. The total energy harvest from glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation is 38 ATP molecules for each glucose molecule metabolized. Although not shown here, the metabolism of lipids and proteins can also be used to synthesize ATP. The immediate source of energy for synthesizing ATP comes from creatine phosphate. The second source of energy for ATP synthesis comes from glycogen and glucose during the process called glycolysis. The end products of glycolysis are two ATP molecules and pyruvic acid. If oxygen is not available, pyruvic acid is converted to lactic acid in the anaerobic pathway. In the presence of oxygen, the aerobic pathway takes place. Pyruvic acid is converted into acetyl-CoA, which enters the Krebs cycle. In oxidative phosphorylation, energy is transferred to ATP. The aerobic pathway yields the greatest amount of ATP, 36 molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose.
byproducts of the aerobic process include water and carbon dioxide. Recall that ATP is used by the muscle cell for the power stroke of the myosin cross bridge, for disconnecting the cross bridge from the binding site on actin, and for transporting calcium ions back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The mechanisms that produce ATP can be compared to a cellular factory. To see animations of these processes, click the ATP factory tour button. To skip the tour, click the factory bypass button. Creatine phosphate uses a process called substrate phosphorylation to transfer energy and a phosphate group to ADP forming ATP. The amount of creatine phosphate is limited and is rapidly depleted during warm-up activities. Click the substrate phosphorylation box to start this process. While creatine phosphate is rebuilding ATP, enzymes of the glycolysis sequence are activated and begin to break down glucose. For each glucose molecule processed, the net end products of glycolysis include two ATP molecules and two pyruvic acid molecules. Click the glycolysis mill to see this animation. During anaerobic conditions, the muscle cell has an inadequate oxygen supply, causing pyruvic acid to be converted into lactic acid. Excess lactic acid quickly brings about muscle fatigue. Click the lactic acid converter to see pyruvic acid converted into lactic acid. If oxygen is available, the cells can carry out aerobic respiration. Instead of conversion to lactic acid, pyruvic acid enters the mitochondria where it is converted to acetyl-CoA. Click the blood vessel to initiate the aerobic pathway. Within the mitochondria, enzymatic breakdown of acetyl-CoA occurs in the Krebs cycle and energy is transferred to ATP in oxidative phosphorylation. The end products of aerobic respiration are carbon dioxide, water, and 36 molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose. Although not shown here, lipids and proteins can also be metabolized to synthesize ATP. To begin this animation, click the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation box.
click any link button to review that part of the ATP factory. We have now examined the three processes for synthesizing ATP. Hydrolysis of creatine phosphate, glycolysis, and the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. Which process produces the most ATP? Click each box to check your answer. After the exercise period is concluded, the muscle restores the depleted energy reserves used earlier in the exercise. These processes are usually referred to as repaying the oxygen debt. 1. Lactic acid present in the cytosol is converted back into pyruvic acid, which is converted to acetyl-CoA that enters the Krebs cycle. Aerobic respiration produces ATP, water, and carbon dioxide. 2. The ATP is used to rephosphorylate creatine into creatine phosphate. 3. Glycogen is synthesized from glucose molecules. 4. Additional oxygen rebinds to myoglobin. Because our bodies use muscles for a wide range of activities, different types of muscle fibers use different methods of synthesizing ATP, which are reflected in their cellular structure. This cross-section of skeletal muscle shows two major types of muscle cells, white muscle fibers and red muscle fibers, which differ in size and coloration. These structural differences relate to their method of metabolism, as we'll see on the following pages. White muscle fibers are large in diameter and light in color due to reduced or absent myoglobin. These types of muscle cells are generally surrounded by only a few capillaries and have relatively few mitochondria. However, they have a high glycogen content. Given these characteristics, would you expect white muscle fibers to synthesize ATP mainly by glycolysis or by the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation? Click the appropriate button. Correct. White muscle fibers mainly use glycolysis to synthesize ATP. Since these cells have little myoglobin and few capillaries, only a small amount of oxygen is available for metabolism. Recall that glycolysis does not require oxygen, but the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation do. Having relatively few mitochondria, these cells lack the cellular machinery, as well as the oxygen supply, for carrying out adequate aerobic respiration. However, with their high glycogen content, they have a ready supply of glucose for glycolysis. Muscles with many white muscle fibers are well suited for activities requiring power and speed for a short duration. White muscle fibers mainly use glycolysis, which synthesizes ATP quickly. Their rapid cross-bridge cycling results in fast contractions. Therefore, white muscle fibers are also called fast-twitch glycolytic fibers. White muscle fibers are powerful due to their large numbers of myofilaments, as indicated by their large diameter. However, they fatigue rapidly because of the buildup of lactic acid from the anaerobic pathway and the depletion of glycogen, the glucose storage molecule. Click the thigh muscles for a demonstration of a power activity.
Red muscle fibers are about half the diameter of white muscle fibers. They are dark red in color due to their large quantity of myoglobin. Red muscle fibers are surrounded by many capillaries and contain numerous mitochondria. However, they have a low glycogen content. Given these characteristics, would you expect red muscle fibers to synthesize ATP mainly by glycolysis or the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation? Click the appropriate button. Correct. To synthesize ATP, red muscle fibers mainly use the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation, which require mitochondria and oxygen. Oxygen comes from the abundant myoglobin and capillaries. Oxygen diffuses rapidly throughout these small cells. Being deficient in glycogen, red muscle cells do not rely solely on glucose for energy. Instead, they also metabolize fatty acids, which are broken down into acetyl-CoA that enters the Krebs cycle. Muscles with a high number of red muscle fibers are especially suited for activities requiring endurance and continuous contraction. Red muscle fibers mainly use the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation for synthesizing ATP. Also, cross-bridge cycling occurs relatively slowly in these cells. Therefore, they are also called slow-twitch oxidative fibers. Red muscle fibers are fatigue-resistant and have high endurance, allowing them to contract for prolonged periods. For instance, the muscles used for body posture, such as the back muscles, have a higher percentage of red muscle fibers. Click the back muscles for a demonstration of an endurance activity. All muscles contain a mixture of fiber types. However, among individuals, the same muscle can vary in its proportion of fiber types. Among athletes, there can be a dramatic difference in the proportion of white and red fibers in the same muscle. Here, we see that the sprinter has more white, fast-twitch, fatigue-prone fibers in his leg muscle as compared to the predominantly red, slow-twitch, fatigue-resistant fibers of the long-distance runner. Here's a summary of what we've covered. ATP must be synthesized in muscle cells to replace the ATP used for muscle contraction. ATP is synthesized by hydrolysis of creatine phosphate, glycolysis, and the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. White muscle fibers mainly use glycolysis for synthesizing ATP. These fibers are quick and powerful, but fatigue rapidly. Red muscle fibers mainly use the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation for synthesizing ATP. These fibers are fatigue resistant and have high endurance. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self-quiz.